to Coffee with Robert Kaushenga and you are in the hot seat as a 360 mentor to help lots of people learn how to improve their lives really that's 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 what this is all about but to those who don't know you I need to tell them especially for the first of all we, we need to welcome the guys on on Twitter spaces and Grace it's well known that you don't have a Twitter handle maybe soon you'll join us uh, then the guys on YouTube it's always good to have you on Friday evenings because you get to see and you get to hear and the zoom crowd yeah and most of the people on the zoom crowd are, are, are Grace fans so so Grace Makoko 25 years of banking and now an inspirational speaker a columnist on financial planning and investments but most importantly and this is the part that I have known about Grace from a very long time ago she's perhaps one of the strongest Christians I have ever met and a person of very strong faith uh, never wavered and clearly a, a shining light in, in the world of faith so you, when there are people like Grace you don't you don't bring Kaushenga but today I am blessed <laughs> to be in your company Grace so you're most welcome Grace thank you thank you Robert. you're so good for my self-esteem thank you <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I apply for the position of praise singer. I think I have. <laughs> so Grace, I'm going to start with uh, a question that's very personal. And, you know, on these issues of money, we all get technical advice, people telling us we should be drawing budgets, we should be like this, we should be like that. All you finance guys talk to us about that. But there is a side that I think is important in the money, money, money game. And this has to do with one's personal experiences from childhood, growing up, and how that influences how they deal with money and how they spend it. Uh, so, and why people react. So, Sometimes people get carried away or because they've had little, when they get it, they immediately splurge their money or whatever. So I wanted to ask you, Grace, your background your, from your childhood, what actually happened to you growing up that influenced the thinking on money? Okay, um, um, I, I'm not sure where to start, but what I'll say... Um, it's always good to start at the beginning. Introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Uh, as a way of introduction, so... And I'll tell you why this is relevant, but I'm the product um, of a cross-cultural union. So my parents are from different cultures and different tribes. And yeah. you'll understand why as we... You'll understand, you'll understand why that's relevant. My mom is no. from Central, my dad is from Western Uganda. You're, you're not so. too bad, Grace, because <laughs> mine, mine, is, mine is much worse. So my dad was from the extreme end of the Southwest, so he was from Kanungu. And my mom mm -hmm. was from the extreme East, and the foothills of Mount Elgon in Manafa. So if you can beat that, then we can discuss cross-cultural. You, you know why, Robert, that's not so bad. They are both farming cultures. So your parents ah, okay. are from a farming culture. My, mm -hmm. I think the conflict came because one is from a farming culture, the other is from a pastoralist culture. And those two cultures think very differently about wealth. So a pastoralist stores their wealth in cattle. And so for dad, anything, and my dad, daddy wanted to put in all his money in cattle. So once, once, can you hear oh. me, Robert? Am I still very... No, busy? I lost you for a minute. So please go back to the beginning. 
okay so i was saying that those that your parents were from both from farming cultures because mm -hmm. um the farming culture is such so that my i think what made the union dif difficult or my setting difficult, difficult was my mom was from a farming culture my dad was from a pastoralist culture is from a pastor okay so pastoralists keep their work in cattle mm -hmm. while farmers land and property they understand yes. the value of land and property now pastoralists it's cows and then they have communal land where they'll graze their cattle but they are nomads by nature so they're taking mm -hmm. cattle from here to there to there so that influences in a way you can't understand money decisions how so tell us part of the union so while my mom is saying let's buy property let's buy land because mom was from luero and mm. the people from central i saw it also in kikuyu the kikuyus are uh, into land they understand the value of land and that's because mm. that's how i guess when you're a farmer land is everything while on the mm. other hand my dad said no 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 i'm going to buy cows <laughs> and he would put his money and that, and that doesn't make him a bad person it's just that that's how they store their wealth yeah they will their wealth is in their cattle and mm. they might not see the value of land the way a farming culture would be so um that influenced oh, wow. how my parents Grace, I, ran I, I their don't know, i don't know i don't know what you have done but the sound has improved greatly for me okay i just i decided to go live i, I got rid of the ear uh, i have i'm not connected to my earphones i'm just reading okay. my voice <laughs> yeah so we growing up we saw that tension we, we experienced that tension in investments mm. my mom was saying was more on the land side than what uh, daddy was more into cattle uh um i come from a polygamous family so daddy had uh, uh had many wives and it was not it was open it wasn't a hush hush thing it was open polygamy and not something to be uh, ashamed of we, i grew up with my uh, half brothers and sisters raised by mm. my mom but so everything my dad did he, he sort of and i'll say it in my language and then translate it he, he would say that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm told, he said, so we came to Buganda to make money and take it back home. He didn't invest in Buganda. He was like, mm -mm, what brought us here was to make money and take it back home. But he's taking it back home was to put it in cattle. So I want to pause that there. So my dad was in the, in the generation that the colonial government handed power to. So when yeah. the country got independence, my dad was in the queue. He was the generation that was in the queue at the right time. Uh -huh. So they were handed over the reins of power. Mm -hmm. The colonial government had trained them to be civil mm -hmm. servants. He happened to, to be, you know how the colonial government was? So medicine, the medical school was in Uganda, law school was in Dar es Salaam, engineering mm -hmm. and everything else was in Kenya. He went to mm -hmm. Royal, I'm going to in Royal some College in Kenya. He was to do, and he, it was actually he was doing economics, but that mm. was his training, and to come back and serve in the government in the civil service. Um, at that time, and I, I, we might have many people on the call who don't uh, have an impression that political parties at that time were along um, religious, religious lines. They were sick. There was. Uh, religious lines so if you are anglican you belong to upc if you were catholic you are probably you dp then you had the kabaka yeka which was yeah. mayan jankanji and then everyone else was sort of finding themselves in there so my dad mm -hmm. was a staunch staunch upc <laughs> so as a family we were young people we, we grew up we are young people i tell mm. my kids when they, they are doing when campaigns come i'm like ah you guys don't know campaigns yeah i mean we sang those upc songs <laughs> oh <laughs> you know everywhere you be sleeping everyone uh, are you, are you, are you <laughs> did you did you wear the 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 red red and black t-shirts which had obote's picture on the front uh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely my dad loved obote with his he loved Obote, he believed in his ideology, he believed in his philosophy. We knew more about Obote than we knew about our blood relatives. As in, 
he would talk, tell, mm. uh, when, we, when Obote went to the Nana Lines Movement su Summit, remember he was a great mm. orator, that he would, yeah. he would tune the TV and listen, would, that he would dissect the speech and say, I mean, that is a brilliant guy. He was sold out. And UPC had so, very many people from Western Uganda, so he was... So what, so ha that, so what, has, what has that got to do with, with you and money? Huh. Now that's that's the interesting thing. So, hmm. um, because that was the we were part of that regime, and my mm -hmm. dad my dad was an insider in that regime. Mm -hmm. Robert, we were rolling in dough, as in money was. As in you we were, were you were loaded. We were the ones you know you know how they settled in Chintu. We were that was us. So I had <laughs> a sibling who was on a state house scholarship. When people talk about state house scholarship. They think it's an, an, an animal of this regime. No, it was there. My brother was on a state mm -hmm. house scholarship, studying international mm -hmm. school in out of the country. We went, mm -hmm. I mean, when you had people, people going to be treated in outside countries, people going on, that was us. Okay. We never, ever once in Obote's regime stopped at a roadblock. My dad had a mm -hmm. card he would show and would be waved mm -hmm. on. There is no job my dad could not get you. He sat on so many boards. So right. once you finished whatever level of education, you got a job. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we were operating what you call under an open heaven. We, it, it was it was our we there is no like I said there is no door door that he could open. When we went, uh, so there was the, because there was the, because the industries there were we didn't have factories in. When I when I got to F one, yeah, I, my pet, my pet took me to Kenya to do. Uh, there is mm. an echo. I don't know what has introduced that. No, no, it's an echo on my no, side. But um, um, I we did my shopping. So all of us are shopping. We went to shopping. We would fly to Nairobi or drive or go by bus to get uh, to shop. So when I got to Gaza, wow. everything of mine was bought in. You you, I you went to Nairobi for shopping. Say, wow. Oh yes, and this was regular. It, this was a not a. It wasn't breaking news. We did it the way you the way you hear these people how they go and shop in outside countries. That was that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so my uh, Kamshina, my Bessie, Bessie was bought from Nairobi because she was what? Russian, but he wasn't doing much. Yeah, but he wasn't doing much. My Bessie, the Bessie I took, the bucket I took to Gaza, the blanket I, took, the mattress hmm. I took, everything was bought. In our in the, this the, we were the, this the, we were in the thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but when I saw so everything came in uh, 1986. So what, what the happened? Started a bit in 1985 after that. So what happened there is because Daddy hadn't. I don't know. <coughs> I said I think when you're. Because when you're caught up in something like that, you don't, you never think it will come to an end. I don't yeah. know. He didn't, he didn't plan, and that's why he, I bring in the financial planning. Uh, if Daddy had so a, lo just a lot of people at that time, that money. a lot of people at that time uh, didn't think that the government would ever end. I mean, they knew it was going to be forever. So, and they were, they would be entitled to life thereafter. Yeah, and remember, government. You once you go, once you reach retirement age, they looked after you in the pension. The pension scheme was uh, defined was not defined benefits. It was yes. defined, I think, contribution or the other way around. So government looked after. And remember, there were very few civil servants. Yeah, so it was a very small community. Facts. Yeah, daddy had never thought of really building. My, my mom had been on his case. Let's build. Let's build. He she had finally mm -hmm. managed to wrestle down something. So he had built some structure, but because it was in Buganda. He wasn't for it. He preferred. Mm -hmm. He thought. He felt that if he was to build, it had to be in the village, in uh, okay. on his side. So mm -hmm. he had. So when the government changed in eighty six, yeah, we fell from up there, Robert. Huh? From up, mm -hmm. up, up there, mm -hmm. like a circle. Mm -hmm. Seven years into, um, in seven in taking over, my dad yes. was dead. He died of a broken heart. He could that that, that change was too drastic. It was too. He had no influence. I mean, <laughs> my dad got wow. cancer in his last days, and the idea that he could stand in a line in Mulago was abominable. He couldn't cope in a line. Wow. 
yet no. yeah. he, you know, so actually people would meet him, would come, the nurses who knew him, I would call him and say, no, 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 come to the front, come to the front. But it was just that whole, he's no longer chauffeur driven, the Penconis of that time, the big cars are not there. He used to the Mercedes Benz, it was Mercedes I mean, Benz at the time. Yeah, everything, yes, yeah, and it was, remember it was Pujo and Volvo, those were the cars of that generation. He, Yes. He didn't know he couldn't pull any string. And uh, okay, M7 had brought in and grew a young crop of people who hadn't really been uh, part of his who, training. Uh, they were learning the ropes, but but he didn't. You see, the, the new people he, he brought in were learning the ropes, but they, mm -hmm. he didn't know them or they were junior. What so he knew Mark Mott, he knew uh, he knew Katuko Kamunt, Kanyomozi, Rari, what all those were not. You know, those were the people that 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 those names had been wiped out. He was not on the mm -hmm. boards. It it was tough. So seven years he so, was in the grave. So so just wait, Grace. Just just wait. So I just want to describe what you're saying. So you had had this life of plenty, of not having to want for anything, and then suddenly there was nothing, and you had fallen to the bottom. And it all came because yeah. it's not something that your dad could have anticipated. No, and that's it. He, he couldn't have anticipated. Like, no, th small things, not even about money. My, my dad mm. bought me a place in Namagunga before. In, and he said, you know, Sister Kefas is my friend. He told my mom, Sister Kefas is my friend. She has told me if, Grace or, if I want Grace to go into Namagunga, she should go into P7 in Namagunga Primary. She'll get a place. In mm -hmm. And my mom said, my mom was a Gaza girl, said, no, no, I want to go to Gaza. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was mm -hmm. that sort of thing where you didn't have to, I mean, once you, you didn't have, he didn't, you didn't have to hustle for anything. He would fix you in, a, in any jobs because he yes. sat on these boards, he sat on these, you know. So it was that mm -hmm. change in access, in influence and the yes. money that goes with that. Yeah, so once it evaporated. He couldn't, that, it could, yes. And then he had, and, he didn't have a treasure trove. Or a, a nest, a nest and egg. A cow, a cow's are, yes, a nest egg. And you know how cows are? Cows get sick. You know, it comes, you know, that um, foot and mouth hmm. is a very, pro uh, is problematic in pastoralist uh, uh, communities. Foot and mouth, and then I think it's also East Coast fever. It comes and wipes out the cows. So... You know, I, ask, I used to ask my mom, even him, I would say, what was the plan? We had okay. to leave the um, government just, house and Grace, go just a second. A um, Herman, our good friend Herman Kambugu, somewhere in Sweden, is complaining that there is an echo. So the sound guys will just check it out and see. But let's continue, Grace. You're saying that he wasn't prepared. Yes. No, he wasn't prepared, and it was... You, you sort of, with hindsight, you know how they say hindsight is 2020, you put yourself in mm. his shoes, mm -hmm. the colonial government has handed over the government to you guys. Mm. Government can afford to look after you. Mm -hmm. Obote was very established. He was, mm -hmm. he was, uh, in that Nana Line movement, he was one of those names. Remember, he, oh, oh, at every Nana Line summit, Obote would speak. He was one of those names that was, he was an orator. He had the conservative government of Margaret Thatcher backing him. It yeah. didn't look like he was going anywhere. And then remember how Obote used to, to, to refer to the people in the bush as bandits. Yeah, he was bandits, just yes. trashing them. So he, mm -hmm. my, there's no way that he, see it coming, that he couldn't see it coming. So it <clears> took him by surprise and he hadn't planned for it. And like the pastoralist in him had his cows, but the cows then, you know how cows are, you know, today. Mm -hmm. And then telephone farming also. That whole, <laughs> you know, someone else in the village was looking after the cows, then they, they need a salt lick, they need to be dipped. He said, he goes and takes the money <laughs> so he <laughs> no, he, there was no plan there was no so, plan so, so, so what, because Grace, that happened I, to us mm -hmm. i want to stop you there a bit mm -hmm. and and capture the lessons mm -hmm. from that and see if you agree with me that there's many of us mm -hmm. who get into jobs or positions in society and we get deceived into thinking that the circumstances we're in today will last forever and we never have look into the future but mm -hmm. also i guess the other issue mm -hmm. you're talking about listening to the story of your mom 
is that we should pay attention to the things that our partners advise us about and have an open mind. But also the most certain thing is that one day all the good life will end and you had better be ready in at least in financial planning terms is that what you're telling us correct correct yeah so i think mm -hmm. i think god has partnered you with somebody you're married and that person mm -hmm. is supposed to compliment you so mm -hmm. if he had listened to her the mm -hmm. blow would have been, they could have invested in property i'll tell you just uh, just my, just my go back mom, a bit grace what did your mom mm -hmm. tell your dad? What did she used to tell him? Okay, so here, the, here is the background. Um, my mom had, had uh, gotten land from mm -hmm. her dad. Mm. And so my mom was convincing that my dad to buy more land. But mm. um, the land that time, and even after, it's not to, to it's a lesser extent now, but... Um, the Masaja Wakabaka were not selling to Nan Baganda. Yeah. So my mom got her, her dad to go and convince, actually, the current, Najinda's na granddad, Nelson, okay. to mm -hmm. sell. And he said, no, my daughter, has, you know, I, I didn't quite like her choice of husband, but it is what it is. Please sell. Yeah. <laughs> and so the condition that my granddad gave was that my mom's name should be on the property. Right. So the property has to have my mom's name, and for for Nelson, well, that was acceptable. Okay. <clears throat> After that experience, my dad was reluctant to buy more land in Uganda because mm -hmm. he was like, "Hey, um, I have other wives. I have mm -hmm. if all the land I'm going to buy is going to have this Uganda woman's name, mm. it's probably not. So yeah, it's it was maybe a bit of that because they were not selling to Banama Wanga." Mm -hmm. So his he my mom was sort of the the conduit for him to mm. get this property to to buy more land. I think he could have mm. found land that didn't have that conditionality, but probably it left a bad taste in his mouth. That that particular mm -hmm. incident. He bought the land, put it put in. They were joint tenants. He bought it, mm -hmm. but it probably left a bad taste in his land. And he's saying, ah, mm -hmm. "Hang on, I came to Uganda to make money to take back." Because my mom was telling him, "Let's mm -hmm. invest here. Let's buy land. Let's build." You mm -hmm. know, you know how it is with uh, land appreciates, property appreciates, but, and this is why I brought in the issue of course, cross cultural unions. Mm. I think that that played a part. If my mom had been maybe the same person, my dad and wanted to buy in Uganda, maybe it would have gone down differently. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah, so, and I think they missed so, a brilliant, brilliant opportunity there. They they got ten acres, but they could have with that sort of money that he had. At the it could have been a lot more. The seven coming, he could have had even two hundred acres if he had mm -hmm. been. Because all this land was there, people were selling. Not, 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 and they were not selling to. They didn't want to sell an acre too. You know, they wanted to sell. You needed to be buying big. a big chunk, and he had the dog. He had the money. So, so now, um, I just want to fast forward. So, suddenly you're broke. And how does that mm -hmm. play out in your life? And how does it influence the way you think about money? So, um, so we struggle between, so from 86, it was a struggle. By the time I was in HSC in Gaza, mm -hmm. my parents couldn't pay the fees. I remember there was a list in Gaza that would be read out in chapel. Mm -hmm. And between us students, we knew that the people, they said stay behind haven't paid mm -hmm. fees. Wow. It was impossible to think that Tibikira's child would ever be on that list. Impossible. Wow. Impossible. There was no under God's name. But I, I and my sister found our names on that list. Not once, not twice. Regularly. So when I got to university, mm. when I got to university, fortunately it was government scholarship. Mm-hmm that problem fell away but the siblings younger than myself and my sister who follows me those ones were affected mm. their education was affected in studying in this school that's good and daddy used to tell us that he said education is a right it's not a luxury mm -hmm. it's your right mm. so just that change of now having of seeing education as a luxury 
So when I mm. finished, uh, from S6 back, I worked. I worked every holiday. The money that I used to shop for campus, I, I did my own shopping. My parents didn't have the money to send me. To, to but let me, let me, let me campus, ask you something, single. Grace. What, what, what were, we, were we in the same year? Yeah, I think you you know you you know where yeah, you used to go, but yeah, but I'm much older than you, obviously. So don't worry; it doesn't it doesn't say anything about your age. I dodged, I'm <laughs> I'm much older. I went to school late. I dodged jump ones, but ah, you are in you are in yes. jump ones with my husband David Mako. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. I that, and I remember him very well. Yes. So, huh. So I refused to go to Champanzi. I was just not, uh, I somehow managed to dodge, but that's the year. But you, but so, you missed, from, you have no what, idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. From what I had from the other Meridas, I don't think I right. missed. <laughs> no, we were equalized. Don't, don't worry. But anyway, so, so yes, so you start working so I, I, every holiday. I, I had a sense of purpose because mm. I needed to work. So I have a cousin of mine called James Mukanga. Mm. And he got me a job in Kampala Kindergarten in my S6 back. Mrs. James is the one who, who, who works at me. Uh -huh, that's the one. He's my, you see, I told you I'm half Muganda. He's, his mom and my mom are sisters. So I grew up with James, James in Naguru, Muganda, so I've known him that's many years. Naguru, yes. He's yeah. my first cousin, yeah. So um, <laughs> Mrs. Mumba was looking for a guy as a girl and a Munga girl. She always took on an S6 back. That was the first job I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but I worked and I did not work because I was a good girl. I did not work because I was hard working. I worked because we, my parents could not afford to buy me the basics. Me who shopped, who's everything was shopped in Kenya, please. Odoro mm -hmm. no was in Kenya, basic, everything was bought from <laughs> Kenya. Now I'm struggling to, I'm having to work to buy the basics. Right, right, right. So in second year, in second year, daddy dies. My dad dies when I'm in second year. But, All sorry. hell breaks loose because of the polygamous setting. You know how polygamy is? I know. That, I know. that family patriarch is keeping it together. So everything goes belly up. Mm -hmm. It was messy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, so when I finished campus, I did food science and technology. I, when I finished campus, I finished June what? of 95. December, I finished June of 95. Because food science and technology no, is for you. You studied what? So you guys... I studied food science and technology. <laughs> <laughs> and you wound up in banking. And I wound up in banking, yes. Okay, go ahead. Yes. So I got a, so I finished in June ninety five. In December mm -hmm. of ninety five, I start mm. working at Standard Chartered. Then I chatted at that time had had a fraud when I joined. Mm -hmm. uh, he, they had had a fraud and they had fired, they had gotten rid of 23 people. Mm -hmm. So they were hiring anything that came through that door. If it was a donkey, mm -hmm. they would have hired it. So I mm -hmm. came in with my food science degree. They just said, come one, come all, start working. So I was like in the queue at the right time. They were just taking in anyone who came in. So, uh, but even as I started work, I had only one ambition, one. Mm -hmm. I promised myself that what happened to me will never happen to my children, ever. Yes. I had just that resolve that what happened to daddy will never happen to me, and what, my yeah. children will never go through what I went through. So I had a rare focus. I was, I mean, I understood the mantra that says it's better how you finish than how you start. I understood the mantra that says it's better to look poor and be rich than to be rich, to look rich and be poor. Because what the middle class have, what people in jobs have, what daddy had as a civil servant is an appearance of wealth, but they were not rich. That is not wealth. There's just that aura. You're in the government car, you're flying business class. You should have mm. My siblings were Budo, Gayaza, Kisubi. Those were our schools, you know. If we went law, we went to college school. That's the or, or namas, na, na, Those are not bad schools now, but at that time, those were mm. like second tier. We went to Gayaza, 
Kipiri Budo. Those were our schools. And mm. daddy could get you a place in there. Mm. So, I mean, for me, I just said, mm -mm, it's not going to happen to me. So from the first check I got in Stan Chat, yes. I knew one thing. Mm -hmm. Stoa, Stoa, Stoa. That was my mantra. Save, 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 invest. So people would... I mean, people would talk so, about me in the back. Um, What's wrong with that? Grace, that she used her money Grace, for. Grace, Grace. So, yes, yes. Just, just pause for a moment. I, I want you to go back uh, because I had lost my people on, on Twitter, on, on Spaces. The sound had gone off. Okay. But I want you to explain. You said when you went into Standard Charter, you said you had one sense of purpose to not make the same mistakes as your father. Just say that again, and what did you do? What was your resolve? Okay, so the one thing when I got, when I got in Stan Chat, I had two mantras. One was, it's better to look poor but be rich than to look rich and actually be poor. And that's why, you know, the middle class, the working class have that. They have a semblance of wealth, which mm -hmm. is pseudo. So daddy mm -hmm. had all these trappings and what, but. Mm. So that was, I had resolved that that one. I was, uh, then I had also said that I would, uh, what, I would not let what happened to me, happen to my mm -hmm. children, or what happened to daddy, happen to me. Mm -hmm. I was going to save, 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 mm. and invest. I mm -hmm. was, and you know, it was just with a certain level of purpose that mm -hmm. I will not... No, I will not. I will, I'll, I'll make investing, uh, uh, just wealth creation and making sure that I'm financially independent, my life's mm -hmm. goal. Because mm -hmm. daddy had had the opportunities, the money had come. And by the way, it doesn't just have to be corruption money. It's just that no. when you're in when a you're position, in, you see, we all get an, you talk about. Uh, when you, when you we all talked, uh, you talked about my faith in God. We all have the Joseph seven years of plenty and seven years of scarcity. It all comes, it comes to each and all, everyone of us. We get those opportunities. Time and chance happens to all men. You yes. get an opportunity. Yes. You must maximize because you don't know what Grace. Is, in your seven years of plenty. Grace. If you squander, Grace. The seven just repeat, yes, just repeat yes. that. You said every person mm -hmm. gets what. They get their seven years of plenty. You know how Joseph, mm -hmm. the dream jo Joseph had when Pharaoh had the dream in the Bible? He said mm -hmm. there will be seven years of plenty and then seven years of mm -hmm. scarcity. Mm -hmm. Also, the Bible says that time and chance come to all men. So yeah. we all get a chance. And yes. we have to maximize that chance. Because mm -hmm. it will not be forever. True. It will not be forever. A time is going to come when things mm -hmm. will change. That's it. So that was my, that, that for me was what I went, I went into the job with a level of maturity that in a sense alienated me from some of my peers, from people who felt, oh, had the luxury to have a good time. I had seen mm -hmm. how daddy had gotten his chance and squandered and it. And blown it. In, yes. So for me, every, from the first check I got, I was saving, I was saving I didn't have, you know, Robert, I didn't have a car <laughs> until I had worked for seven years. These days people enter the bank and in the second month they're taking a loan to get a car loan. I didn't have a How car are you for moving around? seven years. But by the end of seven years, in taxi. <laughs> and being gossiped about by my colleague. But, but within but, seven but you years, have a, I but, had a house but, and but a, you have a, a block. You know, God gifted you with a very good, with a, with a strong, strong partner. Makoko is not a, a fair weather person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the, I, I believe, and, and, and something has going to touch on down the road, that who you marry is everything. True. Who you marry is everything. Yeah, Absolutely so, true. Yeah, you can have, yeah, I, I, David, David was, he understood he probably was a bit frightened by my level of intensity because mm -hmm. the austerity, the austerity mm -hmm. we were living under was too much. <laughs> As in the man, the man ate was, beans. We were, <laughs> no, 
vegetables. <laughs> 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 I talk about beans. Viva, viva. Mm? <laughs> and yet, I had, and yet we were, you know, our income was good. But I was yeah. thinking that, Chief, eh? mm-hmm. I've, ever eaten, I've ever eaten meat and then we moved from meat to eating. You, for, for lunch, you eat cassava with black tea. And dinner, yes. you eat cassava with ground nuts. Did you do, did you do, did you do porridge? Yes, class. Sorry? What is yes. Porridge without sugar. We did, uh, 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 Robert, I, I cooked on firewood. You, Gracie, you cooked on firewood? Me, eh, I cooked on firewood. My brothers fetched water from the well. And I'm not talking about, we're not in Toro, we're not in Kenjoju. This was in Entebbe. <laughs> wow. Hey. So, okay. Yeah, and this was not that life is was not for us. We are Namrunga people. Remember, we are yes. the people running the. Show. You're supposed to have gas cookers, cooks, everything. We had, uh, we had them, and then yeah, they walked away the very way they they walked away the very way they came. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was yeah. uh, the good thing as it happened. Yeah. So I, it, it, we were able to make the transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, so, so that has so, influenced uh, I, I, your... I just... Go on, sorry. I... So Yasmin said, I just had a sense of reality of what mm. can happen when, when money walks away, if you have toward it. It was very mm. clear in my mind that, ah, <laughs> you can mm. be rolling in dough and the money mm-hmm. gets wings and flies. It doesn't even so need wings, need it just walks. It. Yes. So, so, so yes. Somebody once said to me that mm-hmm. money is like mm-hmm. a visitor and how you treat the visitor, they will determine whether they want to stay or they want to leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and so, I, I so, so strongly believe that, um, that in that regard, that money, anything you respect comes towards you. Anything you don't respect walks away. So if you respect right. money, it comes to you. Because my mom's family have an appreciation for money that is mm. criticized. And I, I, I saw it, the like, Kikuyu have that same problem, but also Baganda have that problem. People say mm. they love money. Uh-uh, these people respect mm. money. Mm. It makes them sometimes, they, some of them go overboard, but they respect money. They understand that money is power. They understand mm-hmm. that money gives you options. You see, mm. Robert, today, if power goes off, some people mm-hmm. get into a depression. Remember in the Lord shedding days? Some people get into yes. a depression when power goes off. Other people mm-hmm. just turn on the generator. You see what I mean? It gives you options. <laughs> for, for, for me, I don't even know when power so goes off because I have my solar. <laughs> I live off grid. You see? You see. That's it. So mm-hmm. the money gives you options. Now, Kikuyus, and, uh, and I, why I want to use Kikuyus, it's a chef, safer example than using the ones here. But Kikuyus understand that, and the central people here also understand that, that here, money gives you options so you respect it it will come you don't respect it it goes if you're going to spend it what and uh, it, will, it will walk away so so I, so I want to ask you grace i want to ask you an ish a question about your your principles and philosophy about money and i want you to explain it to me austerity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What does it mean mm-hmm. and how did you practice it and how did you build this discipline to be austere? Mm-hmm. Okay, so like I said, for me, it was just that memory of seeing daddy. Uh, Robert, my dad got cancer and I had to go to take him. I would escort him to hospital in a taxi. My dad, who used to drive in Penconis, who had a driver, forget that he used to drive. I would take him in a taxi. Hmm? And mm-hmm. the taxi man says, Mzee Oh, no. And it's daddy. So if daddy was, <laughs> that daddy was larger than life. <laughs> 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 and then we leave the park and get into another taxi to go to Murago to be in a line. That memory mm. would keep me going. So we agreed with the pastor Makok, my husband, David. We agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, we've, we've always worked, I think what has worked very well in the marriage is we are in agreement as a couple mm. mm-hmm. on what we need to do. So yeah. budgets don't work for my husband. 
Mm-hmm. This whole, neither for me, but I think easier for me. But this whole, you know, financial planning, get a, a spreadsheet, put it rent, how much, uh, you know, those, <laughs> that, doesn't work. that doesn't work for many people. <laughs> it's too, too much English. It doesn't mm-hmm. work for many people. And actually, I've seen it with my clients. That, it's, they're mm-hmm. sort of put off by budgets and what. So we mm-hmm. agree that, you know what, eh? mm-hmm. we are saving 60% of our income and living off 40 Mm-hmm. That was our but that was our plan. That was the financial mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. We save 60, we live of mm-hmm. 40. Mm-hmm. Okay, so because we are because of our faith, we are we tithe. So in that 60%, mm-hmm. we always see our tithe as an investment. So that 60% mm-hmm. includes the, our 10% of tithe. Mm-hmm. So that's net terms aging. So from that time we I we uh we started this plan we lived off 40%, regardless of what that 40 is. And here is the, here is the magic of that thing. The human mm. mind is amazing. Mm. If you tell yourself, I have to live off 40%, you actually live off 40. Is that right? You live off 40. That 40, I, 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 I might, oh yes, if you tell yourself, you remember if you didn't have that money, you would survive. And I had seen it, we had survived after the regime change. We had survived, mm-hmm. as in you won't die. And then we, we really kept our living below our means, not, not living within our means, but living below. That's what really was happening. We're living below our means. So we lived off 40%. Actually, no. By the time I went to Nairobi as an expatriate, I lived off my, we lived off uh, my fuel allowance. It was easy to do that because we had trained ourselves. So also, let me tell you a, a policy about austerity. Austerity you, is not, not for you, times you when got, you don't you, have you austerity. You just, you, you just punished David. <laughs> <laughs> no, but by that time, by that time, mm. by that time, everyone, the whole family appreciated what was going on in the sense right. that that you are, you see, you're building a portfolio that is blowing off cash flow, but you still mm-hmm. have your salary, but you can see the portfolio <clears> is blowing off cash cash flow. And mm-hmm. I think that that was, that's, that's where uh, David is a better, and this is where uh, couples having better, David is a better money manager than I am. Mm-hmm. So we had this thing earlier on in our marriage where this month I looked after, I was then in charge, next month was him. What was his mm-hmm. month? We always, that we had enough money the whole month. What was my time? <laughs> but it was my just... time we had more months than money. <laughs> Somehow he's, you know, he, <laughs> so... I was like, okay, this thing clearly I'm not good. So it, it's maybe it's better I turn it over to him. So, but by that time, you see, Captain, and go and read about the German story. And I'm, I, I had it in my notes, but I, I don't have my notebook between here. How uh, this Angela Marco and that lame guy who was her finance minister, there's a guy mm-hmm. in a wheelchair. Austerity yeah. is for times of plenty, not for times of scarcity. You tighten the belt in times of plenty to save. And the Bible says that. Look at the ant you sluggard. He stores up in summer for winter. You don't store up mm. in winter for winter. You store up in summer for winter. Mm-hmm. So austerity should come when you have a lot. That's what Joseph told the people. Joseph said, bring a fifth. The tax, he said, bring a fifth of your money to wow. Pharaoh. So that when, when the famine came, he then started dishing out food. So you don't tighten the belt when you're in luck. You tighten it when you have plenty. And that is African culture. My grandmother had a granary. You store Mine had three. She store up. Three, three, um, three or four. Mine had four. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, yeah, my grandmother had about, okay, she had a granary. She had, you know, you had one which has millet. You have one which has, mm-hmm. you know, she had divya. But you store up in the times when there's plenty. Now, mm-hmm. that's the mistake I, I okay, and I'm, you know, that's another thing I point out to bring you bring to you that I didn't have to make daddy's mistake because he had made it. So it would have been a shame if I make the same mistake. So exactly. I learned from daddy's mistake. He took the brand, he took the brand, took him to an early grave. We survived. Mm-hmm. Dad died when he was only 58. Mm-hmm. I was only 21 at the time. So so wow. he I I learned from that mistake. So austerity mm. is for times of plenty. Tighten yes. the belt when it's a lot. There's a way you get yes. a psychological satisfaction that you know what I'm suffering because I've chosen. But what we went yes. through after 86, we were, suffer- we were not suffering because we've chosen. Forced on us. You, you, yes, it was imposed on you. So, 
it was imposed that's the word it was so important so this austerity that my family we were going through with uh, my husband in the early years was self-imposed and it paid off it paid off brilliantly uh, uh robert it paid <laughs> off brilliantly um yes. to the extent that you didn't have you get to a point where you go to bed at night not, not in a panic you're like that's whatever true. happens happens because mm -hmm. yeah and I had also learned something from my dad. I might be jumping the queue here, but in terms of the... No, it's okay. Go ahead. I learned something from my dad. At the time daddy died, he was asset rich but cash poor. So he had land. Mm -hmm. Like here in uh, Central, he had land, but he had to... And you see it with our kingdoms. It's a problem in the Toro Kingdom, but also the Buganda Kingdom. They have to sell their assets. They have to liquidate mm. to survive. Mm -hmm. so and at that point he had now the light bulb had come on and he was like i can't be selling assets to consume mm -hmm. but it was too late mm -hmm. so even yeah. for school fees for me and my for my siblings and i so because mm -hmm. i told you we had a junior family he would have to sell mm -hmm. land wow and this land was problematic because remember it's in it's in joint names with his one wife but he's having mm -hmm. to sell it to fund children of yeah, the other woman well. and it, it came with its tensions but i mm -hmm. also yeah, so it influenced the kind of investments that David and I made. Right. It's important to invest in assets that blow off cash flow, not for capital gains. So Say that again and explain money, it in detail. Money what do you mean? With your portfolio. Okay, so if you invest in, in assets that have a cash flow, so that it, they mm. give you money without mm. you having to liquid them. So, for instance, then when you've for instance, a certain level, for instance, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you invest either okay, for, in re for, for real in estate for rental mm -hmm. income, or like me, you have a banana plantation mm -hmm. which generates cash. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So, if you're going to real estate, don't go for necessarily a big house in Moyenga or what. If you put up mm -hmm. smaller houses for ten, which those those from houses, you know the the big bigger real estate doesn't have mm. tenants you, you can go a full mm. two years without a tenant yeah and it's hard to get when you get one yes it's hard to get so go for something small where you get many tenants go for lockups mm -hmm. in markets you know i was surprised mm -hmm. in the panga market a lockup i don't know what it is now but it was five hundred thousand a lockup in the panga market in in, in, uh, Fort in Fort Porto. so mm. <laughs> even here this, hey, i don't know what the rate is now but about two years ago or a lockup mm. here in one big market will give you better cash flow than putting it in a plot in Tanam Kaka. Mm. A plot is somewhere <laughs> in, uh, let's use Nigeria, okay. Oh, you are today. We are going to have to mm. liquidate it. So when you have enough, a portfolio with, which is blowing off cash flow, you can then mm. now go for for, mm. for real estate where you get capital gains. Because, you know, they always say, don't wait to buy land, buy land and wait. Don't wait mm -hmm. to buy land, buy land and wait. Because land people and appreciate wait. But to, okay. get you, to get the capital gains, you have to liquidate. That's the problem. And okay. then some of the rentals, also the real estate, why it's not just such a great asset class, mm. the returns, even though you buy a mm. house, by the time you get the rent comes for you to break even, to say, okay, what I put in, I've gotten out. Eh, mm. 12 years have passed. Uganda's returns, uh, on the other hand, Nairobi uh, has a better, mm. I think it's seven years or six years. Kampala, I yeah. remember, well, 12 years, 13 years, uh, sorry, in uh, urban Uganda. So, but then Nairobi, yeah, if you even get it I right in seen, four years, you, you get your payback. Uh -huh. Yes, mm. that's also another thing. Um, because they have a huge, huge uh, middle class and people yeah. uh, really are looking for land and uh, I mean for property. So I, I saw that I saw that uh, dead, uh, that the assets daddy had, daddy had quite a mm. bit of land in 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 in, in uh in in Toro quite a bit but yeah mm -hmm. that, that that is in a sense cultural and he never really believed in selling it so you don't mm -hmm. want to be like the kingdoms we have which are asset rich but cash mm -hmm. poor yeah also you don't want to have you not know, have equals so anyway so for, mm -hmm. uh, that 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 was the philosophy which i went into my austerity work. and then i had i was very for that i austerity but i knew knew that salary incre increments do not move take you to the promised land you have to get promotions for your salary to change you have to get a promotion this salary for your salary to change six percent what are they grace i'm just repeating for you to lesson. get a 
meaningful. Mm. Go on. Mm. To get a meaningful change in your salary, get a promotion. Salary right. increments that are uh, that are done. You know, every most companies do annual salary increments that that cater for inflation. Only, but you sometimes need even to below. Get promotion. Yes. So you have to work towards promotion. Now, for you to get a promotion, you can't do just your JD. Mm. Anyone who does just their job description mm. that she deserves only salary increment, not promotion. You get you get promotion on what you do outside your job description. You get a yeah. salary for doing your job description. Right. So you must aim for promotion. So for my entire working life, I wanted to be promoted. I could first of all, I couldn't do a role more than four years. Mm -hmm. That was just not that was not for me. Some people can yeah. say in a role for that was not for me. But I aim for promotion. Mm -hmm. At some point, I worked it out that the good life is when you're an expatriate. That's where the good mm -hmm. life is. Forget these local terms. If you're in a company mm -hmm. that is global, you must become mm -hmm. an expatriate. Mm -hmm. That's where the real money is. Because the Ugandan you know they pay according to market like you see your most people's maids most people's mm. workers at home they pay according to market if the market is yeah. paying 60k you pay 60k you don't pay you win rates mm. so yeah so mm. so there are some things that guide mm. my choices at work to ensure mm. i position myself for promotion for the female mm. gender those back-to-back -back babies having babies every year doesn't work for your career doesn't work for promotion it might be your mm. right it might be yes i'm seven brought to gender what we are equal mm. it will not it doesn't bring promotion if you're going to have back babies every year so mm -hmm. you manage your my babies you choose as you choose as so you that see. i can get up so that i can yes the... <laughs> so yeah so but i'm just trying to explain to you that because i needed to store i needed to earn mm. it meant that i had to behave a certain way in the workplace right i never in the uh, I can count on the fingers of one hand how many times mm -hmm. I went for lunch in the 20 years I worked at Standard Chartered. I can count on the fingers of one hand and I would have some Why? fingers left. I worked through lunch. I worked through and lunch. You were um, trying to I, make the point. I was, balancing my, I was making sure that I don't just do my job description. I go outside my job description and I was balancing being a mother, mm -hmm. a wife, and an employee. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't leave too late. I couldn't leave. I wanted to leave at 5, 5.30 latest. And if, you, so if what you're gave, you're watching the What clock, gave for you was never... the lunch? Yes, lunch had to go. And then I was in office 6.37. So my boss knew that from mm. 7 to 5 or 5.30 they mm. are getting every bit of value from me yeah, and so, and so you uh, you uh, wanted you, nice you wanted to build the reputation that mm -hmm. you are this diligent worker who will go the extra mile and that would be good for you it would be good for me and that when the promotions came when the concession of promotions came, I had to mm. be, you know, they take three names. I have to be in those top three names. When promotion mm. comes, my name must be in, among the three they are discussing, and I should be at the top of those three names. And you were focused. A doubt. And no one is going to say her. She's, you know, <laughs> uh, she's <laughs> a childbearing age. She's going to give birth next year, the year after. You know, so uh, mm. it's, I, so but that, 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 that I would say that what was driving that was what I had seen daddy go through. I was like, <laughs> work hard, mm. get the promotion, get paid, store, 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 invest. Invest in portfolio that blows off cash flow and become financially independent. Because regime change comes so fast. It's actually, it's subtle, but it's sudden. So we saw it. I would say that he saw that, but he, it was not clear. So the Lutwas took over. He got a bit worried. He got put in jail. He came out. Then, mm. you know, the war started. The regime change happened. He still stayed in the system. He stayed with his civil service, service job. Then it, 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 he lost it. So even with companies, you actually see the regime change coming. It's subtle, but when it happens, it's sudden. 
no one knows yeah it seems it seems it. like it's sudden but if you were not uh, that's if you're not observant mm. but if you're observant you can see the signals that this thing is mm -hmm. coming to an end yeah yes yes I, my my brother used to be a dj and he used to tell us about mm. a party you know he, you see mm. when a party you know as i cut you know together for mouth you know, he said, okay, this one, or this one is going to go a bit longer. Or you can tell that now people are going to start leaving. So even people now who are listening, who are in companies, you know that the company is going to downsize. Yeah. You might not make it on the list this time, but it will be next, that there's a beer. So there is downsizing, now COVID has come. So the signs are there. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, it's just important that you read the signs. But if you were doing what you needed to do in the time when you, there was plenty you don't have to mm. worry you don't have to to spend savings like now say it's never too late to change if daddy by the way, if my dad had made some changes even in 86 when seven it came in if daddy had mm. just recalibrated he would be alive mm. but he was so stuck in the fact of how can these rag tag people take over they don't know how to run the civil service remember that you mm. you 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 and LA, the, sorry, the nra were wearing boots my dad would look at yeah. the boots on parade, and they came in. Gums. They came in with torn uniforms. And you'd be like, <laughs> yes. And you'd be like, look at these jokers. Hey, it's thirty-five, so, six years later, they are still here. So what? Are yeah, yeah. Don't be in denial. You know, <laughs> recalibrate, recalibrate. So, recalibrate. so Grace. So Grace, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you yes. this: that even I, in my position, I was actually in both mindsets at some point it never occurred to me that that my whole career would come to an end in the corporate world and then like maybe six or seven years before it happened i began to see the possibility of that and then i started contemplating so i know what you mean when you say that but let me take some questions from people that questions are coming in one of them is from Joy Batusa, and she's saying, how did you manage to get your children to understand and appreciate your plan? In other words, to participate in the sacrifice they had to make. <clears throat> Do you want me to take that? I, I take that immediately or? Sure. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, so... Um... Um, I learned, uh, Joy, I learned from seeing from my parents' mistakes. Mm. Everyone who was about 16, when the regime change came, everyone mm. in my, of my dad's children, there was 22 of us, 22 of us mm -hmm. all of 19 of us, I think it is. Mm. Mm. All the people who were above 16 never quite recovered. The change wow. was too drastic, too, too drastic mm. for them. So mm. Mm. they never quite recovered. Mm -hmm. So what I, and then I, I saw the mistakes my mom made with us. Mm. Mommy, when the, when the regime change happened, she would sit and cry and say, it's okay for me mm. to go through this, but not my children. Her children couldn't bathe cold water. They couldn't, that whole cooking on firewood. Her children couldn't cook. I mean, she, yeah. oh, and it broke her heart. So mm -hmm. I, so from my young, from when the, my kids were young, they mm -hmm. grew up in austerity so my children don't demand the things your children demand they mm -hmm. grew so so my and okay that, it's, that also a bit of it's the food scientist in me my children don't mm -hmm. take sugar until they are two years old my children eat wow. boiled food my kids don't mm -hmm. watch tv so these things of your children having meltdowns when dstv dies my children didn't mm -hmm. watch that tv was not in my it was in my room so they, <laughs> they didn't watch cartoons they learned to play board games, where was the fridge so they, Where was the fridge? They didn't know, you know. That, that, <laughs> the, the fridge, that, that, my children, the way I brought them up, don't they don't get into the fridge. They have to ask for permission. So, you know, the Waganda sent a chitari or a My children grew mm. up in austerity, knowing that that's normal. Mm. So I remember one time my 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 daughter was in year two, in what would be P two, and I asked mm. her, "What did you have at school?" She said, two, two bread, two, two, you know, she was in P one." She said, mm. two breads with, with, uh, uh, with meat in the middle. I told her, madam, that's a sandwich. So <laughs> as it, my kids did eat bread. So 
<laughs> they ate but for breakfast it was uh, i always did dawa and that is the food sent with me with banana mm. so that was mm-hmm. their breakfast I, they didn't bread is not something like so they, it's just it's upbringing i i brought them up to understand that we are happy and this is okay <laughs> mm. so because of that so my kids didn't demand tv they don't demand tv or dstv until they got exposed when 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 we went i i i mm. I, i just didn't believe that by uh dstv was a good uh, uh way to to just to, to, i was never going to watch it i didn't really like what the kids what they had for the kids on the tv so i never used to buy to whatever subscribe but then we became expatriates then that that came on the table but So joy it's it's they didn't have to understand they were they were trying they they got to understand what was going on that was that was life you know for my kids when we went to a party and there was ice cream i always had yogurt in the bag i would give yogurt because they used to do that because i didn't want them to eat ice cream no, they, they Gra- love yogurt grace grace you're too much i give up on <laughs> I, i yeah no, no, no but I, i agree with you i i went overboard but yeah. i'm just saying that i never had to convince my children about anything so uniforms my mom even before the the problem with the regime change my mom always we we were hand me downs from the older kids so my yeah. kids the first born because of the four years age gap by the time this mm. one starts school the other ones uniforms are there and they never saw mm. it as a problem so one time my husband said hey, but grace what the children <laughs> made you work these ones who have come after the first born ever wear new clothes mm. so let me ask you <laughs> this like, other question why are left in these clothes why should we be buying my mom used to make us <laughs> the, somebody yes, has ahead. asked anet namudu says appears like me and you grace we retired quite early what gave you the courage and what were the experiences in the initial years after retirement when the regular check had ceased now grace i'll pass that on to you i, I won't speak about myself i'm still in the first months okay so i wouldn't say uh, i chose to retire my company went the company went through a downsizing and i found my name on a list to be downsized finally and then we also we we we, we had a we uh, we had an issue in in the way we parted but um mm-hmm. so i wouldn't say that i chose mm. but i was ready i was ready okay so this happened in 2015 but i was mm-hmm. i had been ready for five years okay and and this is where i really thank my husband and my kids um we had gotten to a stage where everyone understood mm. in the home that mm. all is well Yeah. So when I told my husband that oh I'm going to have to leave no one was panicked. True. Because we are not going to have to take a change in lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So I always subconsciously I always said whatever had happened that will not happen to me and I even used to tell my colleagues at work that the mm. test uh, stancha tells me to leave I'll kiss them goodbye and leave. You know yeah. eh? so So I will say that I wasn't prepared for it in the sense that I I I but the downsizing had started mm-hmm. and the rumblings were there I was mm. an expensive hire when when you when uh, when you don't make money you cut costs so expatriates are the first the chopping yeah. they are the first on the chopping block huh? uh but because in my years so plenty I'll tell you let me just give you like one thing that I did When I was an expat when you're an expatriate the, the company pays fees for you right for your kids <clears throat> so I remember we had a discussion with my husband and said okay you no know, let, let, what to do let's behave like we are still paying fees and put that fees away mm. which we did wow mm-hmm. so we had a school fees fund you see yes so yeah mm. so that, that's what I'm saying those are the austerity things I'm saying you don't say that ha ah, I'm not paying fees and you start going mm. on holiday now we are in Italy sending us pictures on Snapchat mm. and and WhatsApp <laughs> Now we are in Greece in Athens. Now I've taken the kids for this cruise. Now mm-hmm. oh. So said okay, let's put our the money aside for the school fees. Let's act mm-hmm. like we don't have these expatriate packs. Mm-hmm. Um as an expatriate you're being your house is being paid for, utilities are being paid. So mm-hmm. keep that money. 
act like you're, act, you're, you're paying the utilities, as in just keep that one. It's a discipline. But I told you that for me, why I'm different is because I'd seen daddy. Daddy had a government mm. house and they used to pay a nominal 100 shillings. That's what it was the rent that government would pay, would charge. Mm. So, yeah, so it's, I would, so I just want to emphasize that I wasn't, I didn't choose to retire. Mm. I, it happened. It happened. Um, the blow so, so, was less of a blow because it? of mm, the mm. decisions I had made earlier. But yes, um, it's not easy, and I'm not in retirement. Um, um, <laughs> but neither am I. That two neither things happen I. to you. When, I'm, I'm I'm out farming. Two, two, yeah, two things happen to you when when you when you leave the co corporate space. One mm -hmm. is identity. What surprised me, Robert, is people didn't know how to introduce me. So exactly. <laughs> people, people introduce us by the jobs we do, which I will never allow to happen again. That's why I can't allow someone to introduce me grace of somewhere. No. No. Because um, what, I, what I discovered, people would say. But by the way, Grace, just just to stop here. just to stop you there yes. for a moment. I have yes. exactly the same rule now because people were in, beginning to introduce me as the former CEO. I told them stop it. I have my own identity and quantity as me. And if you're going to introduce me, introduce me as me. Don't start tagging things to me. I have never been like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> mm. yeah, so that la loss of identity. So now they say, okay, let her introduce herself. Very <laughs> like, okay. Because you're mm. used to saying, oh, I'm the area general manager for financial markets East Africa, uh, for uh, gen uh, mm. the G East Africa general manager for financial markets at Standard Chartered Bank. Yes, now yes. you're like, okay, I have to. So that's, I think that loss of identity is what disturbs me people. And I think that for, I, I'm mm. convinced that that's what took daddy to an early grave. The fact mm. that his network had evaporated, he didn't have an mm. identity. The whole mm. who am I redefining himself that he stood for um constitution constituent assembly CA mm -hmm. and mm. went to Taiwan so badly he couldn't believe that those villagers hadn't voted him after all the things he'd done for them. He had put <laughs> him a guy, Grenada Road, and he has loved him. <laughs> and they <laughs> so they didn't vote him, so that also really said uh, so. I think the loss of identity, and then the other thing that people struggle with is the extra time, the excess time. You know, yeah. you're used to a structure. I'll tell you in mm. Nairobi, because of the traffic, I would mm. leave home at 5.30 a.m. and leave my babies mm. in the bed. My children would be asleep. I would just mm. go and I'll just kiss each of them, you know, like, but they'll be asleep. I would tap them and say, I'm going to work now. It's 5.30 a.m. They're asleep. Mm. I would get to office 6, 6.15. Then I'm back home in the evening. So mm. you have a structured day. Now, that structure is not there and you're like okay 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 what what okay, next okay uh, what is it do i have to, what, <laughs> what next year so it's and i think that that also is destabilizing in the beginning mm. what do you do with that extra time yes yeah but it, it's for a season and i know but you know what let me say? let me explain in let life, me explain to you something Grace. Days. so sure. i i i i i could see that that excess time would be there if I ever left my former job, which is one of the reasons I was driven to go into farming, because I knew that I would never have a spare hour if I am working at the farm. And it has worked out brilliantly. There's been no time when I have had excess time or, or, or what they call it in in computer language, I think it's called redundancy or something. I, I haven't experienced it. I have been working at the same pace and at the same energy as I was before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think for me, I think where the challenge was that I, I, had, I had four years out of Uganda. So mm -hmm. I had sort of lost the network here. Yes. Then I come back to it. And my, mm. my uh, point of call was resettling the family. Yeah. Uh, when the regime change happened, mm. the, um, uh, sorry, when Lutois, it was the Lutois who happened. Yeah. The State House scholarship evaporated. So wow. one, 
siblings had to come back. And he came from an international school in outside countries, and they put him in Kisubi. Now, remember, Kisubi is high-end school, Whoa. but he couldn't cope. The yeah. whole posho, posho and beans thing, he had been used to fries and burgers. That's the time, <laughs> I don't know if some of you are old, if all of you are old enough to remember slide rules. He was doing yeah. PCM. He was using mm -hmm. the scientific calculator in the school. They brought him to a slide rule. Yeah. And he, it messed him up. It completely messed him up. Mm -hmm. The change was too drastic coming from international school into Kisubi. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he just went through a phase. So I was determined that was going to happen to my kids, switching them yeah. when we came back. So I said, okay, let me settle them down, settle them in. So I became a full-time soccer mom from being a corporate mm -hmm. person to a soccer mom. Now, as a mm -hmm. soccer mom, when your kids go to school, you have all that time. Yes. To sort of think, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yeah, so it, that was the difficult thing. And then remember, four years I've been away. Most people don't know that mm. I'm even back. Yeah. So how do you plug in? People have moved on. Yeah, mm -hmm. but now, where women have a better, and you, you're your best robot that you, you had that from, but where women do better than men is we, mm -hmm. we, we pour ourselves into our families. You pour yourself into the husband, the kids, what, and mm. managing this and managing that. But there were times mm. as a soccer mom, I missed discussions around GDP, discussions around the economy, <laughs> discussions of fundamentals, discussions around what's happening with the currency, what's happening with the investment. I really miss those as a soccer man because now I'm talking about football matches, I'm talking about basketball or PTC, I'm talking the teacher. So I, I missed that time, but I, I had my I had my kids, I had my siblings, so I was good to, uh, to reconnect with my siblings. But yeah, that can be that can be a bit of and and you see it with the civil service. People who leave the civil service at 60 at the retirement age, they struggle because of that extra time and loss of identity. Your phone goes but, but, silent. By the way, you know, by the so way, they die they die still, within five years. Yes, 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 they are gone within five years. Hmm. And yeah, so and I think that that whole thing of people stopping to call them, I think also that 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 he didn't have a phone and what, but because of those boards you are sitting on and people coming to him for help and what, and connecting them, all that dried up. And yeah, so that 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 that's also I guess painful for someone at that age. Um, yeah, so it's. Let me let me read let me read you let me read you let me read you some questions. Right. So okay. Evelyn is saying that she's struggling with excess time in Abuja. In Uganda, she was engaged in family projects, gardening and real estate. Now she's stuck. How can she use this free time efficiently? But there was also an earlier question where somebody said, how do you, what are, can you give a description of the invest, investments that are blow off cash? That's from Harriet. I'm sure you know which Harriet I'm talking about. <laughs> Harriet Musoke. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm very careful about that uh, prescribing because people sort of go into, I'll tell you mm. that mm. The, any investment, if it's a business, it's going to blow off mm. cash flow at some point. Yeah. Mm. If it's passive, if it's a portfolio income, like uh, government securities, if it is what, if it is you get a dividend, Mm. Uh, coming securities, you a uh, bonds you get a coupon. Mm. <laughs> These days, banks even for fixed deposits, I say they can give you your interest rate every month. Mm. Where you can get it. So yeah. you money market funds can give you um lockups. I talked to you about lockups. If you have lockups in markets, farming, mm. uh I talked about farming. It just has to be something where you don't liquidate the assets to get money out of it. In other words, but let I'll me just let me just stop you there, Grace. In, it it's an asset which is immediately put to use to make money. Mm -hmm. So if you have mm -hmm. a car and it's doing mm -hmm. taxi, that one is generating income. It's not just sitting mm -hmm. there as a store of value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the caveat on that, it should be in your sphere of, of, of uh, competence. Don't Absolutely. go into an area you don't understand. So Absolutely. let it be in us in us in a, what you call your what Warren Buffett refers to as the, the just your sack of your sphere of comf, of uh, competence. So you understand mm. the dynamics of making money. And if you're just learning, understand that for five years you're going to be in school, you'll make losses, but you will come out mm -hmm. of it. So, but mm. it's assets that will blow off 
cash flow that mm. you need to go for. Okay. You said the other question was... Uh, Somebody was, is, um, I think, sorry, joined a partner in Abuja and is now uh, redundant. Yes. For, yes. Mm. Okay, so um, that's something that um, you... what. <laughs> What you can do, and I don't know, it depends on how you work with your partner, but you can mm -hmm. actually help your partner to invest their money in passive mm -hmm. income, mm -hmm. in portfolio income or passive income. That, that's mm -hmm. one way to do it, as in you help save. You know, I, I realize that expatriate wives spend a lot of time shopping. They spend a lot of time, you know, uh, saying planning holidays. You can actually yeah. be someone who helps, because this is your time of plenty, who encourages yeah. your husband to save. And mm -hmm. then I don't know which bank you are dealing with here in Uganda, but ask them to put that money for you in bonds. As in you okay. save it and put it in bonds um, for him and just build a portfolio. But you see, you will have to understand how, and I, as I said, it depends on how much you have your, your pattern. Uh, so, so, you and how, how so, you so, so uh, Grace, run the home. That's the thing. Go on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing I've seen that um, some uh, expatriates wives do is, I don't know if you have a master's, this is the time to add value to yourself. You can study. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can study and plan for when you get back. But mm -hmm. um, if the, your, ex, your husband's permit is such that it allows you to work, mm -hmm. go for a qualification. Usually when you have their qualification, they will give you a job. So if you go to an, an university in Abuja, it will be easy to plug in and get a job within get a job or even volunteer in those NGOs and what there's quite a bit you can do or at your children's school planning for holidays yes you can do at your children's school and you know you really need to invest in your children because a, lo a lot of uh, expatriate families lose their children on the culture bit on the what you know teach ground them I went to uh, because I was in Nairobi I went with my Mogisu mate so my mm -hmm. children stayed very connected to their roots and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and just invest time. One of the things I missed in those four years was time with my kids. Time invested in your kids is worth every minute and know their teachers. I noticed that everywhere you go, teachers only concentrate on children whose parents yeah. are keen. Are engaged. They will, you know, those international schools, they have a policy. You don't touch the child. You don't beat it. I would tell them that ah, I believe in spanking. I want. Don't let my child go to the dogs. Let me know. I was I was very very active. But now if I'd had more time, when I was a soccer mom, I did that very well. I read. My children have a strong reading culture because my mom instilled in us a strong reading culture. In my mm -hmm. family, getting a distinction in English is not breaking mm -hmm. news. <laughs> it has continued in our generation and in, our, in my, my mom's By grandchildren. Way, uh, my mom's grandchildren Grace, all do very well in English. Uh, Grace, I, I, I want to say this mm. for yeah. the benefit of our people. They've, they've, they've listened to you, but I also would be very unfair if I didn't say this, that I have the highest regard for your sister, the professor of law. I think she's one of the most brilliant mm. people I have ever met uh, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so when you say mm -hmm. that background, I, I know a bit about your family to know the achievement levels. So please let her know. I've said that to her before mm -hmm. in another forum, but just, and by the way, her dear husband mm -hmm. Keith is a mm -hmm. friend from childhood. So, so I know mm -hmm. them very well. Okay. Yeah, and Pamela got a distinction in English. My ma we read Peter and Jane. By the time we started, uh, by the time we went into P1, we were at 12C. Well, some people were still trying. So we, we, that reading culture is very strong. So the lady in Abuja, invest in your children, get them to read. My children are avid readers. Because I didn't, I didn't have TV, my <coughs> children read. They read. They have English. They have good uh, uh, creative writing skills and what. So it, it also investing in your kids, re uh, reading with them. The international schools uh, give you a book every week. But my kids were doing three books a week. So, so, I mean, there's things you can do. Grace, I have this question for you. Um, and it's, it's really personal. So where are you at in your life now? When you evaluate where you are, are you happy in your skin? What would, just, just describe for us, where are you? Okay, so... 
um, right, <laughs> I turned 49 last month, the other month, mm-hmm. July. Mm-hmm. I once I when I got back and settled, I took out a two year sabbatical to just mm-hmm. say 18 months sabbatical to just ask myself what does what do I want to do with my life. Mm. Now I had the luxury of taking out a sabbatical because I was financially independent. Mm-hmm. Please underline that most most people you- after who were um, who were uh, who are downsized that dashing to the next job. Hmm. Um, so, and then also just saying, okay, how do I tell my family? How do I settle them down? Then I went into consultancy, uh, mm-hmm. financial markets consultancy. Um, and that really, you know, it sort of evolved. I started to get uh, sit on boards. And mm-hmm. because, because I'm comfortable in my skin, Mm. I my spa- I, and I, I, I have pissed myself. I found mm. one thing I discovered in consultancy. People know what ails them. So mm. you just go and sort of ask, uh-huh. So what are the mm. issues? They tell mm. you the issues, then you help them. Now they let their hair down because I don't have an agenda. Mm. I, I'm not part of their corporate politics. I'm not part of anything. People are actually telling you this is what ails us, this is what we are missing. So you're able then mm. to add value. Um mm. the employer I had, the natural bank is one bank that trains. So mm-hmm. I'm extremely skilled in my lab, in my sphere or in my uh, mm-hmm. area, mm-hmm. micro competence. So it's uh, wholesale banking, which is your corporate banking, financial markets. I'm very yeah. skilled because I was very well trained. Yep. So getting skills is, mm-hmm. and that, that is what I, I, that's how I get even the consultants, people coming. So that, that's really the, the space I mean, but also, uh, Robert, my kids are, t- uh, in t- are teenagers now. My youngest yeah. turned 13 two weeks ago. So, mm-hmm. but the last six years have been really investing in, in the girl. I have daughters, I'm a mother of daughters, and investing in them and uh, getting them, you know, working on their value system. We are, mm-hmm. we are cr- practicing Christians, getting them just grounded in, in the Christian faith. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, that, that's, the, that's the space I occupy. I had told myself that when my youngest turns 10, I'll do a master's. I didn't have a master's. And mm-hmm. in, the, in the bank I was in, the, my employer really valued experience over papers. So mm-hmm. there was no pressure to do a master's. So I, I did my master's. I finished uh, uh, this month. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, also that took up some time. And yeah, so, but I mean, that's in... Um, <laughs> and I'm trying to think how how I how I calibrate that. I mean, let me let me let me let me, let me let me let me put it this way for you. Let me just put it this way for you. You mm-hmm. feel mm-hmm. comfortable and in control of where you are. Yes, yes, and I understand. I have an appreciation for. You see, you will never find me in uh, anything. Uh, I have an appreciation for geopolitics, but also an appreciation as an investor on why, and I don't know how I can calibrate this carefully, on why you shouldn't get so stuck about government, you know, government, why you shouldn't get stuck in that rut, you know, that rant. You shouldn't get, (laughs) so I have an appreciation of my surroundings how I can put in the car, how I can you know, navigate without agitating and what, how I can take advantage of opportunities. There are so many opportunities in Uganda, so many, like I can't, like you can't believe. The trends, the trends in our economy are, are there and they are clear. They are fundamentals that you people, as sure as God is God, every five years we have an election but between year three and year five, if you don't make money, you don't know how to make money. Which, because which that takes me is so predictable. Which takes me to my last question too. Give us your last message on money. If we must take away anything on money, tell it to us now. <clears throat> if you if you don't remember anything I say today. Two things I would want you to remember. That to make money, to create wealth, 
to plan your finances, you must have two important qualities. You must be intentional. Intentional, that involves discipline, focus. You must be intentional. Like, don't allow life to happen to you. Be intentional and you must learn to be patient. Don't act wow. like this is the last thing deal you do. Don't ask like act like this is the last job. You have. Don't the reason that's the difference between the people who left before 86 and the ones who came after 86. They're intentional and they are patient. Learn to be intentional and patient. You're in a hurry. You're in a hurry. You will drive that car in five. That's your dream car. You will drive it in five years. First buy the plot and build the house. You're in a hurry. And Great. Great time is actually on your side. Great. Be intentional and that's enough. Grace, I'm, I am so grateful for you agreeing to spend time with me and for us to have coffee together. I am so grateful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I, it was an honor and a privilege to speak to and on, the on, people. I hope and I on the rare them. occasion that, that I pray, I will, I'll, I'll pray to God to bless you even more. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to say this to the people who are listening out there on Spaces, that one of our mentors, Joan Mugenzi, <clears throat> has been so, so blown away by your interest in her work. Her following has doubled over three days, and she's offered to do a free transition coaching session every Friday. So if you go to her Twitter feed, you'll get the, 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 the details. Grace, can you join Twitter, please? And, and let me know when you set up a handle, because then I'll make sure you get the followers, because people need to learn from you. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not sure given where I want to go there. And given that my challenge is that I'll ever be on Twitter, but I actually got, I, I was, I signed up. I got an account yesterday, but one, because I needed to, no, okay. <laughs> to, the, to get a sense of how this goes. But uh, <laughs> I'm a slow adapter, so. <laughs> it's okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go there. I know what to do. I, I get account. <clears throat> Thank you very much, the people on Zoom, okay. the guys on YouTube, mm -hmm. and you guys on Spaces. It's a good night. Have a fantastic weekend. And we'll be back next week to continue learning and growing. Bye, Grace. Bye-bye.